ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Sad Onion. As always, I'm your host, Vasse, and today, you can see we got a couple types of meat in our pan. We are going to make a burger after one of the channels that really start, got me started into YouTube. They're called Cult Moo. I'll have a link in the description down below. We're going to make a Cult Moo burger, which means this is going to be probably the most outrageous thing we've ever done on the channel, because they're awesome. As Senior Wear would say, we're making a Cult Moo burger, bitches. So this is chorizo. I've used it in other things. It is a spicy beef sausage. So this, uh, they do a show called Willet Sausage, and they also do deep fried what? So this is gonna be a deep fried beer battered burger with some sausage and some uh, regular ground beef. So this ground beef has some Worcestershire sauce and some garlic and some brown sugar. This has you know cumin and what you'd imagine a taco spice has, and a lot of it, and it's you know a nice dark red. So this is gonna be a pretty fatty burger. So we're gonna homogenize this and we're gonna let it sit for about 20 minutes so they can all kind of, you know, get used to it. It's like smashing two things of Play-Doh together almost. I'm just gonna, you know, make sure it blends all together and goes homogenous. And it's not gonna be a big patty. It's not gonna be a big burger. It's not gonna be one of our Zweihander burgers um, because I think that that's just gonna be too frickin' rich. Um, I'm also gonna throw in some extra breadcrumbs because chorizo is really, really fatty. Which is the reason why I didn't get very fatty beef. Um, this is pretty lean. I think it's about 6% uh, fat. Uh, usually I get a little bit better for, or a little bit more for our Zvi burgers, but uh, I don't think we're going to need it. Um, I almost contemplated throwing in an egg and really kind of going a full um, meatloaf route with this bun and this burger, but um, I think I think this is actually going to be the right size. So I'm going to just grab the breadcrumbs, and that's probably going to be enough because we're going to need, don't have too many left, uh, and we're going to really going to want to use it for our outer coating for our burger. The Double Down and the, uh, the Five Guys burger was just warm up, guys, all in preparation for this. So, I almost wanted to make them out of the, the, um, the buns out of waffle, but my waffle iron broke, so... Unfortunately, that's probably not going to happen this time. So we'll be back once this, you know, gets... And that's probably a good enough size. I'm using a Kaiser bun, which you'll see here when we get to deep, the, you know, deep frying preparations. But it's not very big. And um, we're also going to throw on some sautéed onions onto this burger and a spicy Russian dressing that I'm going to make and lots of cheese and some spinach. So this is going to be a pretty pretty crazy burger. So uh, we're done. There's our, our burger. We're going to let that cool down a little bit and we'll throw that in the pan and we'll be right back. Alright, so we are in fact back. So we've got our patty. Oh, it's always such a nice sound. I love that sound. There we go. This isn't going to take long to cook up because it's quite thin. Just got to make sure everything is cooked thoroughly. It's got a nice color to it and it's going to give us some nice fats and we will give, ooh it smells wonderful. That The chorizo has this really nice spicy smell to it that most sausage I find doesn't have. I don't find it spicy because I eat ghost peppers and stuff like that. but. Um, Ooh, we can already see that that fat coming out. That's wonderful. I made a burger yesterday with just the half of the ground meat that I had in that in this bur in this burger, um, and didn't come out quite as nice with the fat because I didn't really mix in. Chorizo is like 30% fat. <laughs> you can even see chunks of it in there. Um, all that white stuff. It's a very fatty sausage, but it's good. We're also going to, you know, saute the onions in this pan and then we'll probably just quickly toast the Kaiser bun just so it has a little bit more insulation. We'll get to the plating and the padding and all that and it'll be awesome. This is going to be a great burger. I'm not going to give it too many flips. Probably stick it just a little bit. Just let's see what that looks like on the other side. That is a beautiful burger. 
That is a wonderful burger. It's going to have a nice sweet, I really find adding Worcestershire sauce to any burger. And it is going to break apart just a little bit, but that's okay because it's going to have kind of an extra bit of insulation to hold it all together in the form of the deep frying aspect of this whole thing. It really does. It smells out of this world. I'll probably give it one more flip and then, you know, I'll do the, the actually I can probably add the sauteed onions here along with it, but probably not. Actually, we'll just do that after. There's not quite as much fat coming out of this as I thought there would, which is just it's not too big of a problem. It'll get a nice sear. And like I said, it won't matter if the meat's a little bit falling apart because it was predicted, um, but it's also going to have, like I said, an extra casing of nice crunchy beer batter and um, breadcrumbs. And we're deep frying this because deep fried what, bitches? It, I wish I had smell vision though, because this is probably the nicest smelling burger I've ever made. One more flip. Yeah, that is gonna probably move it to a part of the So we'll be back to the when we were actually like getting it all together. So we'll be uh, right back. All right, so we are going to get to the plating here. So we're gonna give it a nice little bit of mayo just for a little bit of extra sauce. I'm not gonna go too hard on that. I'm just gonna use the spoon to kind of spread that. And you can kind of see that must uh, Russian dressing and um, hot pepper sauce should be pretty good from the condiment side point. So we are going to put on some provolone cheese and some pepper jack cheese. Two cheeses because we're making a wild burger here. And we should only have to use... There we go. It's perfect. I think I got this actually perfectly sized, so this should be pretty nice. So I am going to slap on a little bit of greens. Hopefully this will work out. I've never actually deep fried a burger with greens. We'll just remove the stems. Guess who wants that? Not me. I like a little bit of spinach on my burger because it's delicious. Do that and you can kind of see all that fat which is beautiful. We'll throw the sauteed onions on here. There we go. That's wonderful. That is a burger and a half. This would be a good burger regardless of what you did to it. Wonderful. Now I'm going to layer this sauce on so that we just have a little bit of extra moisture when this goes into the fryer. And that heat is going to give a nice bit of tomato vinegary spice to that. Very excited. Never been excited for a, bur as excited for a burger as I am now. Although, our Flying Dutchman burger was pretty dang good. And we're just going to do one piece of the pepper jack cheese. And then, and there's your burger, guys. This, like I said, is a pretty passable burger. You can even see a little bit of the dripping going on there. This is a pretty passable burger no matter what we did to it. So I'm going to drive some toothpicks into this, do some wash up, and then we'll get to the next step. So this is our beer batter. I probably need to add a little bit more. This is a Hefeweizen. So there's a little bit for that and a little bit for me. I'll just mix this up. I did give it a pre-dunk in the liquidier batter before I added more. There we go, that's gonna be nice and thick. And that should act as a deterrent to what's going on. Here's our burger. I'll just slap that in and get that all kind of mixed in. It's going to be messy, folks, but deep frying burgers always is. Well, pan frying, because I don't have a deep fryer that works. Get that going. Just get it on all sides. It's definitely going to be a thick batter, but that's okay. Almost like a, like I said, it's a beer batter. They always tend to be pretty thick. And we will transfer this to our breadcrumbs and hope that it works. I did stick some uh, toothpicks in there. 
There we go. I'm gonna transfer this over here. Sorry for washing my hands on camera, but otherwise, this isn't going to work. So I have our oil heating up. Take a little bit more beer. It's a yeast beer, it's really good. Especially that style, so we'll just give that a bit of a roll. Sprinkle some breadcrumbs on there. The top did lose a little bit of its dough, but that generally happens. So it's okay. Just sprinkle it on. And there we go. Oop. That was the fear, but that's okay. Don't give any room for the oil intruder to get through. Well, one side looks really good. The other side needs just a little bit more work, but I think I think we're good to go. Other than that, just um, patch that up. There we go. It's a bit of a hatchet job, but uh, deep frying a homemade burger. Who said it was going to be easy? So I'm going to wash my hands again, and we'll transfer it over to the, the boiling hot oil. We'll be right back, guys. I think we're ready. We'll do a test. Yeah, I'd say we're ready. All right. Let's get you in there, buddy. Ooh, you lost a little bit off the top. Let's make sure that that doesn't stay like that. The top's going to probably be the greasiest part of this. So we'll do that last. and actually comes up almost fully to the side. Very nice. We'll just let that sit for a second. And uh, that looks beautiful. I love it. This reminds me a lot of the Monte Cristo that we did. We're just gonna let that sit for a good two to three minutes each side. This is wonderful and I'm just Identifying our sharp, pointy bits. So they did get lost. <laughs> so one, try to put them in, in various places that I'd be able to find them. So I don't eat wood. That doesn't sound good. I can see that cheese is leaking out the side. Which is good. Good sign. here on Sad Onion. That's okay. Looks like it's coming out really well though. However, ooh yeah. So make sure it Frenches on the side, as Lofi would say. French it, French it. Hear a little bit of pop, and that's probably the cheese. It's kind of leaking out the side here, like I said it would. Uh, it looks beautiful though, and it smells great. The source of it, the, the, the sign of a good burger is the smell. And after this, no more fried foods on Saturday. <laughs> Look at that. There we go. That is marvelous. Like I said, the top might get just a little, you can kind of see it caught a little into the bun, which is why we toasted. I imagine this is going to be a little on the greasy side. We've actually had really good luck deep frying burgers from other fast food places. They usually stay pretty not gross. Oh, the cheese actually got its own little crust. That is wonderful. The only thing I think that I should have added here was jalapenos, but unfortunately the rest of the jalapenos that I bought for the other burgers that I made uh, was pretty, they were pretty crap. They were mostly rotten, so. I think we're gonna, just going to finish this up off camera and we're going to get to the, the plating and the, the eating step because that looks goddamn delicious. Okay, hey, so we are at the final process here and it's kind of falling apart. 
but it doesn't look greasy. Take a good inside look here. Cheese came out all melty. It all looks really good. Um, the only thing I think might have happened is the bun got a little greasy, but it looks fine. Let's take a bite. Holy shit. This is legit. It is kind of falling apart. But that's to be expected, I, I suppose, when you do things like this. That was just the sauce and the breading. The breading is buttery. It definitely has that beer flavor. That's really good. The cheese is all melty. And uh, the spinach is really good. It didn't actually come out all kind of stringy and gross. The, uh, the meat patty, which is the only other thing that really matters here, is really nice and flavorful. Tastes mostly like the chorizo sauces, which was to be expected, and the reason why we did it. The mayo really comes through at the end, too. Gives it kind of this nice, you know, fatty, buttery taste. I don't know how to describe mayo really all that well. And that pepper sauce actually infused into the bun. That Kaiser bun isn't greasy at all. Even though it had multiple points of entry to get greasy. Not bad. I'm gonna wash it down with a little bit of beer. This is A+. Plus. A+. Plus. Well, I hope this is a good enough burger for the Colt Moo boys. Good enough burger for me. This has been Voss Day. As always, thanks for watching. Bon appetit.